Hello everyone and welcome to another War Leader PvMP video. Today I'm going to be showcasing fights versus a Runekeeper for the entire video. Uh, these fights are very long, very slow. I'm going to be talking a lot about the Runekeeper War Leader dynamic, uh, but mostly about just the class mechanics of the Runekeeper and their design and how that stuff is. And that's really going to be most of what this one is. Uh, right now I've got about 20 minutes of footage. I will probably do something uh, fast forward and things like that to cut this one down because it's going to get very repetitive. I mean, there's there's important stuff to see as in later stages of some of the fighting, but a lot of it's going to be really repetitive, especially in later rounds against the same runekeeper and stuff. Anyway, we'll go ahead and just get started because we don't want to drag this out longer than it needs to be with a really overdone introduction. So, here we go. Alright, now uh, these fights against Nimue, if you watched my last video, this is from the same evening and uh, after losing that first fight against her, I, I was really not <laughs> too pleased about that, so I wanted to try to get some revenge. So here we go. Now uh, we've both eaten up food and uh, did the whole hop up and down thing. Uh, right there I went ahead and did just a, a plain shield bash, managed to get it off. Uh, she's stunned in return. Uh, Nimue is very, very stun happy, uh, is the thing I've noticed about how the Keeper plays. And uh, a lot of this... Is, it works because of diminishing return changes that went into the Etmores when Rohan launched. I mean, diminishing returns are still there, but the cooldown for diminishing returns was changed, it was shortened, so that diminishing returns resets faster, and there was also uh, changes so that certain crowd control abilities were taken off the same cooldowns. Uh, right there, you just saw me get stunned, mezzed, dazed, etc. three times in a row, uh, I spent quite a long time crowd controlled there. That's just something that I'm really not too happy about being allowed in the system. It, it needs a little bit of fixing, in my opinion. But, you know, it is what it is. I mean, honestly, at this point, I, I've taken so much CC, I shouldn't be getting CC anymore thanks to Audacity. But I'm still going down for about one second. Uh, there went a, a big AoE debuff. I'm standing in the middle of it. I need to move. Uh, but I have gone ahead and gone into commander stance early uh, to turtle up. And the other thing you notice I've done is I am doing defensive aura because that is far more effective and efficient against a runekeeper than aura of command. And it's better to just boost the mitigations when you're turtling up against them. And my strategy is basically <clears throat> use banner terror as much as I can, let them run out of power, and finish them off after that. And that is what I am trying to do. Uh, Nimue is going ahead and using that Runekeeper Power Restore as often as she can. That is going to give her a, a lot of power survivability. And uh, I'm trying to do some damage, force her to, to use heals and stuff, uh, but I'm not being very aggressive about it right now. And that's mostly just because I want to get her low on power and then go for the burst, is how I want to try this out. Uh, the other thing to note is that because we both ate food, uh, with the boosted regenerations, we really aren't going to get anywhere in the early stages of the fight. We actually need to wait for the food buffs to wear off before either side is going to be able to get an advantage, because regeneration just counteracts uh, most of the power usage, a lot of the damage gets put out, and uh, also counteracts even the uh, Banner of Terror effects because of how much regeneration there is. I mean, she's still going down just because Runekeepers constantly spam their stun skills, but yeah. Uh, here we go, triple use of the shield bash. Really, probably not the best option. I mean, I've got plenty of power, so it's not a huge issue. But just be aware that shield bash is pretty pricey as far as a power cost. And so you do want to be smart about when you use it. The other thing is that you do build up those diminishing returns. And Warlords only have one type of crowd control, so it's guaranteed to be the same classification. And so you're going to be going against your next application of it. So you just want to be careful, because you will run yourself out of power if you constantly spam it. And, uh, you know, you're not going to be hitting super high numbers with it all the time. Now, uh, one other thing that Nimue is going to be doing later on is she's going to start using the Runekeeper's incoming heal debuff a whole lot. And uh, this debuff is potable. Now, I'm going to be mousing over it, and when it comes up, I'm going to talk about it again. But this is something that you guys should watch for, 
and pay attention to. This is something you want to learn, is what this one looks like, and <laughs> that you can get rid of it, and how to get rid of it. The secret to getting rid of it is hit the purple tactical pot. That's how you do it. No real big secret there. Alright, I've gone ahead and gone into RF command. Uh, because Nimue is staying a bit closer at, at the side, I want to get some extra melee damage off if I possibly can, uh, even just auto attacks. Also, I'm, I'm feeling comfortable with how well I'm doing in terms of healing with defensive aura, so I want to try out the aura of command, see if this makes a really big difference to my survivability or anything, and uh, just see how it goes. As you can see, I, I take a bunch of big crits right in a row, which uh, really isn't good for my perception of how it actually works out and uh, actually is pretty detrimental just in and of itself. I mean, that one crit was a uh, 4,800, that's almost 5k. That's uh, a fifth of my health. I wish I could take out a fifth of the Runekeeper's health with one shot. <laughs> there, I did go ahead and use the better morale potion, and uh, I should be going back to defensive aura because this really isn't working out, and it's just not worth it. Uh, there, I took another hit for 4,000. And uh, the defensive aura, you know, it's not going to cut out a huge ton. Uh, there, I tried to do it, but I got interrupted by that that stun. There we go. Defensive aura, at least it went off that time, even though I got stunned twice. Uh, but you can see it does make a noticeable difference in how much I actually get hit. The mitigation boost is a lot more significant than you think, because, remember, that, that 5,000 damage I took, or just under 5,000 that I took in one shot, was after all the mitigation I already have, so the mitigation boost from Defensive Aura is mitigating against the raw number, not the number that you see actually hit after mitigations. Um, I should have just gone ahead and used my heal there, but I, I did go ahead and stun, give myself a little bit of breathing room, uh, but it really wasn't worth it. I should have gone ahead and healed, then gone for the stun so that the cooldowns would have been ticking longer. That would have been smarter to do. Um, oh well. Yeah, I got stunned once again. And uh, that debuff right there, I'm not totally sure that might be the debuff for the incoming healing. Uh, I've got to wait till I mouse over it, because it's been a while since I fought the Runekeeper. Not entirely clear on that one off the top of my head. It's gone now though, so uh, if it was, we will see it again, and I will mouse over it. <laughs> Alright, I do have Quitters off cooldown. I should hit that soon here. Uh, but I d have gone ahead into gotten into Brawler Stance. She's low on power. This is the time for me to try to burst. But she's just going ahead and doing a lot of crowd control, going ahead and healing. And uh, as you can see, only 400 power, barely going down at all. And still putting out a lot of damage, still keeping herself alive. Uh, I'm just waiting for that stun to come off cooldown to try to get her again. Come on, come on, shield bash. There we go. Good hit from Intimidating Shout. Get stunned again. And uh, there goes Runekeeper healing. And unfortunately, that stun was very well timed, and it worked out for her. Under the old Diminishing Returns, that particular stun would not have actually done anything because of how many stuns I'd gotten hit with already. That would have been absolutely nothing. I wouldn't have even stopped for that. So... The stun mechanics are a big part of what is helping Runekeepers be successful right now in the Etmores. Here I'm trying to do... I should have gone ahead and just done Shield Bash again. Uh, I get stunned one more time. I'm gonna go ahead and go for Quitters, and it goes off, I die. Uh, came close there. I actually will probably need to try that again, but it uh, didn't work out nearly as well as I wanted it to. Uh, go ahead and go again. Runekeeper Rock deployed. I just go right for the rock. I'm gonna kill this thing. And now I should be going right into Commander's Stance, because I realize that this is just going to be a turtle fight. <sighs> you know, as I said in that last video, the great thing about Rohan, uh, even if nothing else, I mean, even with other problems fighting Runekeepers, uh, with all the stun mechanic changes, is that we can actually outheal their damage output as a war leader. And this is the greatest change that we have gotten for the fight for fighting Runekeepers because in the last stages of Isengard, that was not possible. A war leader could not outfight a Runekeeper. And there is that debuff for incoming healing. Essence of Winter, that is what it looks like. 
It is that frozen ice wall with a little eye in it. It is purple. You want to remove that thing when you can. Now, Nimue is doing something very smart here, which is she is going ahead and stacking up her debuffs so that when I hit my Bottle of War Breath, my Tactical Pot, it actually removes something else and leaves the Essence of Winter there. So you've got to be smart about when you're applying that debuff as a Runekeeper and when you're hitting that Tactical Pot if you're the non-Runekeeper trying to fight the Runekeeper. Fortunately, it is only a, about a 30% and you can still heal through it as long as you've got the, the right stance ready. Uh, defensive R is a big part of that, slowing down the damage that's incoming. But it does allow the Runekeeper to actually make some serious headway into your morale bar. And so you have to be aware of that debuff. Try to not let them keep that on you. Get rid of it when you can, all that fun stuff. Uh, once again, we are, of course, fighting with food. So uh, these first five minutes is really going to go nowhere. And uh, let's actually just go ahead and skip on to the next uh, interesting part. So we're going to skip ahead to when the food debuffs have expired. And uh, here we go, fast forward. Alright, here's a good spot. Alright, food debuffs are going to be coming off very shortly here. Uh, as you saw during the whole fast forward, nothing really happened. More bars went up and down, but overall we stayed very close to being full power and full health. Um, and when we did go down a little bit, we went right back up afterwards. There I go with the interrupt. Uh, now one thing that I start doing, just because I get really annoyed with having my shield bash and my heals getting cut off mid-animation by the Runekeeper stuns. Because the Runekeeper stuns, the stun applies faster than the stun from shield bash, which is something I don't like. It, mechanically, it's it seems dumb to me. Um, if my shield arm is swinging as doing the animation, they should get stunned too. So they were both standing there stunned. That's not how it works. So what I start doing is I start hitting shield bash and fracture together to guarantee that that shield bash goes off. Because <clears throat> the fracture cuts through the animation, applies all the effects of that previous skill and the auto attack in between, and slams them with the fracture hit too. So it's a nice triple hit and it gives them the stun, and it gets them really quick. See, there I did it right there. As you can see, it's very effective. It is power heavy, because Fracture is a power heavy skill, and Shield Bash are a power heavy skill. Actually, they, they have the same power cost as each other. So, you don't want to do it too often, but if you want to make sure that that stun goes down and doesn't get interrupted, that's the way to do it. Uh, Fracture is also great for cutting off the animation of Shouts, and for cutting through the animation on Call the Shadow. It won't use up your buff for Call to Shadow, but it lets you be ready to fire off another skill faster than you would if you just waited for that animation delay after Call to Shadow. Right, we've got Essence of Winter up on me, so I should be hitting a Tactical Pot very shortly here. Uh, going ahead and hitting Quitters. Uh, okay, I stopped. <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm watching. There we go, Essence of Winter. Didn't quite get that pot. It, uh, our rocket just got pulled, and it's actually rock withers. This is my my big chance actually. With this our rock here, this is my opportunity to kill the runekeeper because if I can get that runekeeper stunned, keep them slowed, rock withers will get on her and beat her up. I just have to be careful about using AOEs so I don't pull rock withers because if if rock withers comes after me, the fight's going to be decided. Keeping rock withers on Nimue will decide it the other way. But as you can see, the Runekeeper is able to easily keep Rocky crowd controlled, mezzed, all that stuff. Really takes him out of the fight all by itself for a large portion of this. Which uh, is just a little disgusting. Also, just look at the duration on that crowd control there. That was a long one. Uh, thank goodness that they're cut in half against players because Runekeepers have a lot of CC. Actually, Runekeepers probably have more CC than a Hunter does. The other thing about Runekeepers that is very apparent is just that they are very, very power efficient. I mean, yeah, the power bar goes down, but think about it. They are spamming power abilities, power using skills, 100% of the time, and it takes a long time for it to go down. And a big part of it is actually just the use of <clears throat> Banner of Terror in these fights. A ward just showed up and is going to be attacking Rock Withers to pull Rocky off of Nimue. And Unfortunately, this means that I'm not going to get the kill here. Uh, I could try to go for the burst here, 
uh, that bubble did just apply. But <clears throat> this means that she's got that uh, Runekeeper effect where melee damage will cause me to get stunned. And that's going to keep me from being able to put down damage effectively. I, they're getting stunned multiple times. Three times in a row right there. And it's going to let her just keep on firing off those heals and staying alive. And the amount of healing the Runekeepers put out in heals stand, while in full damage attunement is a bit absurd. I mean, I can't complain too much. The amount of healing that I put out is also pretty high. But again, I'm, I'm a primary healer for the creep side, and uh, anybody who wants to argue otherwise, uh, name the other healing classes for creep side, please, uh, because there's defilers and war leaders, and uh, that's it. <coughs> and uh, remember, defilers were added later. War leaders were the only healer at the start of the game. Anyone who says war leaders aren't a primary healing class, anybody who says war leaders aren't a primary healing class doesn't know what they're talking about. But, uh, where was I? Yes. Power efficiency. As we've seen already, even at 400 power or so, it really doesn't stop the Runekeepers from using whatever abilities they want to. And this is just a mechanical issue. Runekeepers, they don't have power issues. The devs decided that that's what they wanted them to be, and frankly, I must disagree. Now, part of that is Audacity and the whole power reduction costs on Audacity. That's something I didn't think ever should have been added to the effects on Audacity. I don't see why it was really necessary. Making classes one out of power would have been much better mechanically to have than allowing them to just have lower power costs to let them fight longer to deal with the higher mitigations and all that. It would have been better to force players to just have to adapt themselves and do other things to, to compensate. Oh well, uh, I'm not a Lotro dev, so <clears throat> that's not the way that things are. But uh, th the big thing that I notice about fighting Runekeepers with the, the War Leader and after these fights is that going into Brawler Stance is death. If you go into Brawler Stance, you pretty much guarantee that you're in trouble. You lose way too much healing, you don't put out enough damage, especially against stun-happy runekeepers. You just get absolutely hammered. Uh, here we go, I just dropped both my banners, she's at 400 power. This would be potentially a time to go for a burst. But I'm not going to do it because I know that even at this power level, one, she's got way too much morale, and two, even at this power level, she's still going to be able to keep kiting and continue popping out those heals. It's just not going to stop her. Uh, 146 power inside Banner of Terror, continuing to spam attacks. No real problems whatsoever. Any other class that tries to do this will be out of power. Only the Runekeeper can get away with this. Now, I mean, I'm a very power survival class myself, so it, it can be a little hypocritical to talk about this, but at the same time, for me to be power sustainable, I have to actually make choices about which skills I'm using. I have to consciously stop using specific skills because they're too power hungry, uh, specifically melee skills, uh, even black speech can be heavy, uh, also menacing roar, and I have to focus on my healing, and that means that I've got my heal rotation, which is not constantly spamming skills, occasionally a shout. Uh, I really cut down on my skill use to be power efficient. It's a choice where I say I need to conserve power. If I cut out all these skills, I can do that. The Runekeeper doesn't have to deal with that. So it's just a huge mechanical difference and something that I just don't agree with. Now, I don't want to sound too um, whiny about this whole thing or anything. I Obviously, after, when I initially got done with all this, uh, I was really not happy. Especially because for these particular fights, I've actually retraded into full soloing mode, which if you look at uh, my video number 50, the Welcome to Rohan, and see my traits, uh, I've got Empowering slotted in, and basically I am full DPS built except for some morale corruptions that I have in my build. And even with this, the best that I can do against this Runekeeper is a draw. And if I try to go for a burst, I hurt myself too much to uh, recover from if I don't leave soon enough. I actually stop recording there and finish off. Uh, without recording because I, I'm starting to run into lag issues with just how much memory is being used up. The fight drags on 
for uh, another, I want to say, probably 20 minutes of us going nowhere. And it finally does end in a draw at the very end. I, I stop attacking the Runekeeper. I think I renamed my banner as well, and we, we kind of shake hands and leave after that. But that's after I take two, three deaths to the Runekeeper and don't manage to do anything. And uh, in the end, what I have to conclude right now is that Runekeeper versus War Leader, the War Leader cannot dictate how the fight's gonna go. It is the Runekeeper's fight to lose. If they aren't built very well, if they make critical errors, stuff like that, you're gonna be able to kill them. But otherwise, the best you can do is turtle up in Commander's stance with defensive aura on, point defense down, keep dropping your banners, and just survive. This will work out just fine if you want to call up to the OOC and get reinforcements in there to kill the Runekeeper for you. Uh, other classes do better against Runekeepers. Not everyone's good against everything. But for the War Leader, unless the Runekeeper makes critical errors, you're not going to be able to kill them. And going to Brawler's stance generally is going to end up with you in a lot of trouble. Rewatching the, these fights, actually, though, that one uh, I, I did mention, I should have gone for a shield bash when I didn't, and tried to go for a little bit more burst damage when I got her down to about well, just a bit over 1k. So the, the Brawler's burst towards the end still could be a viable tactic. It needs more refinement from me to figure out where exactly you use it, how much power you need, all that kind of stuff. And the big problem is, of course, that the Runekeepers, they don't really run into a major power issue. They can keep on firing their skills, even when they're at the very bottom of their power pool. Under 100 power, they can still keep on spamming away, which is just a mechanical issue. And uh, something that I think the developers should probably address. Probably not going to happen, but uh, this is the way it is. Anyway, uh, that's all for this time. Just my advice fighting Runekeepers is don't really try it. Uh, get them to leave you alone, move the fight away towards the Red Circle stuff. I mean, you can turtle up and survive and move plenty of distance across the map as long as you just keep yourself moving and redeploy your banner and all that stuff. Uh, just don't be aggressive against them. Let them make a mistake and try to exploit that if you can or get reinforcements, or just get out of there. Anyway, that's all for this time. Good luck and have fun out there. Ugmog is out.